Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dicing with Death with our friend and comrade Hobgoblin, also known as Ryan. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, business as usual. Yeah, you ready to. What's your new character's name? Balrog Blacksteel. You ready to play with Balrog Blacksteel, the cleric yes. with 13, uh, 19 constitution? Yes, indeed. Wait, cleric fighter, multi class, right? Yes, fighter priest. Fighter priest, wow. The dwarf. Um, we'll get into the descriptions in a second. If there's no shout outs or anything we need to do. There are no shout outs we need to do. Asking questions I guess I need. No shout outs whatsoever. Alrighty, alrighty. Um uh, da -da -da -da. so I guess money first. Uh holy symbol and holy water cost twenty five GP each or free or how are we doing that? Uh your holy symbol you can just have for freezies. The holy Basically. water, does it say, is there a cost um, for holy water? A, it listed as 25, it's just like on the same slot in the PHB for, as 25 GP. So holy it's like holy symbol, symbol, comma, holy water, comma, etc. for 25 GP. Um, I don't know if that's one, I assume that's like one dose of like grenade holy water to throw it undead. Hmm. But there's something like bless requires a splash. Okay. Completely. This handbook has some more info on it. I don't. All right. Well, uh, you can buy for twenty-five gold a uh, vial then. Okay, and that, but that's probably. Do we want to? Do you want to keep track of doses for bless? Yeah. Yeah. Would you keep track of that? So, how many doses come in a in a? I think. I think what is twenty-five it? GP buys is like a grenade. Like you spend twenty-five GP and you've got a missile weapon that. Yeah, like a, a glass vial filled with holy water. Yeah, you can or in your case, unholy water. Uh, both, actually. I mean, to cast bless, you need holy water. Oh, cast you need. Curse, you need unholy. I was gonna have both. Okay. Okay. So I'll drop. I'll drop fifty to have a vial of each. But how many blesses do I get out of each of those? Uh, I think uh, one vial is a bless spell. You really need to bring down the pain on your priests and your other campaigns then. 25p yeah. per blast is going to get pricey. Yeah, it seems un that seems quite wild. I was wondering, yeah, it's pretty vague. I was wondering if like, it would be like, you can use 10, I mean, if you'd say 10 blesses for a dose. 10 blesses or one grenade. All right, yeah, I'll say 10 blesses for a dose. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, if her, per grenade. So 2.5 gold per bless? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure, done. You've convinced me. You can also, it's got, in the, the Complete Priest's Handbook has um, instructions for how to make it. I guess you just, you need like two, or you need three second level priests. Right. And then there's a second level spell that summons a holy symbol, and maybe also holy water. I don't know. All right, either way. And my club, it's normally free. I'm just going to fork up one GP to have like a well-balanced... Nice oak cudgel. Okay. Sound reasonable. Oh, is, is that one yeah, GP? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I mean, they're, they're free, so if you want to pay for a nicer one, you can pay for a nicer one. Yeah, sure. Um, languages, do you have an undercommon or something of the sort in this world that would be worth speaking, or should I just... Uh, right now, I've got common dwarven or cobgoblin. No, uh, you've got, like, mercenary talk, merc talk, um... I mean, like, so in no under common. some, I mean, typical D&D &D world, there's, like, an underdark with a under common mm -hmm. that's spoken by drow and dark dwarves and things like that. Is that not relevant? No, no. Okay. Uh, you, if there is an underdark, you have never been to it and know nothing about it. Okay. Um, also, fuck drow. There are no drow. Yeah. I hate drow. My character is basically a homemade uh, Duragar. Yeah. Without yeah. any of the special powers. Okay. Uh, anything else um, you want to do? Uh, I, there will, I, let's, yeah, just a sec. I mean, yeah, that's not with my character sheet. Uh, for first level, my first spell I'll have memorized is command. Typed it in Skype so we have proof. Alrighty then. Oh yeah, that reminds me, priest spheres, what rules are we going to be using? Oh. So I'm just a general priest. If you're a generalist, please don't you have access to everything? Yeah, there's just a slow, they redid some of it in Spells and Magic. Mm -hmm. uh, the big thing is they got rid of half of the elemental spheres. Right. Let me grab my books. 
books. Not the only thing I was grumbling about was they took away. So they made it so that general priests only have earth and water. Earth and water, but no fire it's or fire air. And air. That's bullshit. No, we're sticking with the people. So minor access to all elemental. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the only change. And then they introduced all those new spheres that they don't even give it to general priests, anyways. Um, I'll, I guess I'll ask you if there's spells from there that I want. But. Yeah. But at this point, consider yourself all access. Okay. Uh, for the viewers, I posted in Reddit my character sheet, except for the changes which I just made, which are pretty minor. Mm -hmm. And some pictures to give you guys some to help your imagination. Uh, we don't even need this stuff anymore. All right. So I think that's about it for the character creation. Um, I'm not going to bother saying you have the character sheet, right? Right, right. The only thing I changed very little. I, I subtracted the money. And, and so just the changes that we just discussed. Right. So, well, I'm just trying to find so, your character sheet for Balrog Blacksteel. There we go. Speed. Okay. Um, so where are we in terms of your world? Let's get into the campaign setting. Uh, I'm are, as I said before, in Sands Gate. Um, what are we in terms of timeline? Is this is this once again after take role play and the fall of Ferasi? Um, this will be before role play and all that stuff. This is going to be um, early on in the Age of Mist. This is prehistory for the world. Um, higher magic use, lots of magic around. Mm -hmm. um, people have like their the treaties between elves and humans are they're, they're, there's no written treaties between any of the races everyone just kind of gets along there's no real problems this, in the world this is after the war with the ogres uh there are there were a couple of ogre wars this is after the first ogre war before the second ogre war okay um okay so in terms of my um my main god would that be Verasi or uh, that is up to you. You're a generalist priest, oh. so you you kind of. Just... I mean, I'm more. Con what is my holy symbol, at least to begin with? Mm. It would probably be some sort of like a uh, skull on a, a circle, like a how do we say? Uh, what's a red stone? Uh, amethyst. Not not amethyst a gemstone, but like a normal uh, yeah. a flat stone. I don't know. Some sort of red stone is the back, and then you would use onyx to put like a, an onyx okay. skull sitting on the, the red stone. Okay. Yeah. If it's okay with that, I think I'm going to make that in the form of earrings, like gauged earrings that, that are a holy symbol. Okay. Um, you still will need one around your neck to like hold and cast spells with. Yeah. Okay. All right, sure. You can still have the gauged earrings, but you need to be able to hold your holy symbol to cast some stuff. All right. <laughs> Casting like this. Ah, be ridiculous. All right. Okay. You said skull on skull onyx on red. Mm -hmm. Five charisma. Oh man. I am a disagreeable. Yeah. Low personality. Or people skills. Yeah. Exactly. I tend to rub people the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So is that Skull and Bones, Verasi, or Malchus, or both? Uh, matter? It, it doesn't matter for this situation. Neither of them use that as their holy symbol, but mm -hmm. if you're like an evil person, this would kind of speak to all the evil gods. Okay. If you were beholden to a specific <laughs> one, you'd use their holy symbol, but as like a general holy symbol for evilness, this works. Okay. It's, it's something that all the evil gods would align with happily. Sure, sure. Okay, so I guess let's get things started. I, I'll go ahead and describe my character, mm -hmm. our anti-hero, Balrog Blacksteel. He is a dwarf. Um, he is actually quite large for a dwarf, about four and a half feet tall, 170 pounds, barrel-chested and big-boned. Um, he has a long bone-white mane and long pointy beard, uh, dark ruddy skin, and rusty brown, almost red eyes. Okay. Um, he almost always, okay, I, I guess, let's see, has prison tattoos, dwarven prison tattoos, uh, black ink. Um, on his right shoulder is the dwarven rune for bull, bull, bull. Am I saying that right? 
Yes, Bool. The God of Fear on the left soldier is Baal, Baal, uh, God of Exploitation. On the front of my neck, sort of can see a little bit, base of the throat, uh, is Bell, Fatalism. And then on my back, the tilted scales of Quantarius, the right forearm, the hammer of Sayor, creator of dwarves and yada, yada, yada. Why Quantarius? Um, isn't that bargains and yada, yada, like yeah. cheating people out of their shit? I don't know. Oh, okay, no, yeah, it's bargaining and that sort of thing. It's not, yeah, he's more of a neutral god, but that, I was yeah, just curious. Absolutely. Not, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's on my back. I, maybe I didn't even have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm certainly not above praying to whichever god has influence over what I need. Um, typically, I'm almost always wearing a suit of chainmail, mm -hmm. black enameled chainmail, with a black cloak over the top of that. On my back is a massive maul, which is basically a sledgehammer weighted for battle. Uh, crudely painted onto either side, onto I guess on one face of the mall is the is a red dragon. On the other face is blue, a dragon in blue, representing whatever that god of vengeance is. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, so my alignment is lawful evil, which Valthara. Although he is evil, it's, say that again. Valthara. Valfara. Velfara, I'm sorry. Vel. Yes. Vengeance rules anger, wrath, revenge, and jealousy. She is sometimes depicted as a two headed serpent, one breathing fire, the other breathing frost. Thus, the red and blue heads. Yes. Bring beer, bring beer. Maybe. <laughs> I, yeah. I call my maul Malice. Malice. Record. Nice. Um. So lawful evil, although I am evil, it's not without some sort of a code of honor. Um, you know, stick to your word and sort of live within the law, but still, yeah. Yeah. Still trick people and bend things to your end. Of course. Sort of that, yeah, so, sort of the superior firepower sort of mentality. Sort of the rule the world like, under yeah. my sort of thing. So I typically will obey the god or the laws of gods and men and sort of bend it to my will. Although uh, more highly than that, I value the laws of nature, the law mm -hmm. of the jungle kind of mentality. We'll see how that develops. All right. I think that's all the important things. Um, so I am an outcast amongst my people. I spent some time in prison. I'm assuming I did my time and left, but I'm now sort of a... An outcast. Right. Um, did time for is it colluding with orcs or something. Colluding with orcs. Mm -hmm. Alright, then we're going to have to say you escaped from prison. I did. Ooh. That's a little... Okay, not so much on the lawful side of things. Well, I mean, do you, if you wanted to be let out from prison, okay. then colluding with orcs has got to be something else. Fine, right. that's fine. Okay. Do colluding with orcs. All right. so we discussed last week. Um, so I don't know where the orcs are, or sorry, where the dwarves are, but I think they're a long ways from here. So we'll they say are a very long ways. Quite a while. Yeah. Um, are they on? They're up like past those lakes where the role play party is now. Uh, well, there, there's a couple of sections of dwarves. The dwarves up there would be further to the east and a little bit north. Um, you're probably from dwarves to the south. That are off the map. Yeah, that are off the map. Alrighty. So, am I just walking into Sandsgate? Uh, you are walking into the gate of Sandsgate from Steady south? Mill. Yeah, from the south. I heard anything about Sandsgate? It is the entrance to the Cooling Sands, which is a large desert, well, a small desert, actually, mm -hmm. uh, spotted with lots of well uh, oases every which way. Mm -hmm. However, it's still one of the more dangerous deserts around because the amount of oases increases the amount of life that can live in the desert. And mm -hmm. so the desert is uh, filled with all sorts of nasty little critters. Uh, lots of scorpions, lots of venomous snakes, the occasional monsters that are, you know, kill people that leave no tails. Um, mm -hmm. People, you know, traveling around, sometimes people will come across like caravans that are completely destroyed and no one knows what it is that took them out. So the cooling sands are dangerous, but 
you're less likely to be to dehydrate because there's so many wastes everywhere. Okay. Have I am I coming here for any particular reason or just Yeah, you're out of the dwarven area, you're currently just wandering. Unless okay. you have a, your own backstory that you'd like to impose. No, nope, I'm going to have given you the extent of the backstory that I've come up with. Okay. So, um, am I, would I be persecuted or harassed for openly having symbols of evil gods? No, not in the Age of Mist. In the okay. Age of Mist. So uh, then my, my holy symbol is dangling right out, and then my YOLO tattoo is slightly visible at my neck. Okay. Although I am wearing my chainmail. And I strut on into Sandsgate like I own the place. Alright. You get some looks from the guards as they see your earrings and your uh, holy symbol hanging out. Mm -hmm. Kind of glares, but they let you in without question. Mm -hmm. uh, and you walk in. What, what do you want to do? Is it a gated city? It is a gated city. Um, you got nice big walls that surround it that run 30 feet tall, made of stone. Mm -hmm. uh, one entrance at the south side, one entrance at the north side. There's a bunch of different wells scattered throughout the city. The buildings are fairly tall, actually, mm -hmm. all made of stone. A lot of the stone comes from the, the, the mountains to the west and south, the Drowning Peaks. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. And yeah, it, it um, seems to be a fairly boisterous, lively city. Uh, populace is fairly happy and fairly diverse. Lots of humans, lots of elves, lots of dwarves, a couple of gnomes and halflings, uh, the occasional goblin and orc will all walk around too. Okay. Um, I will. It's probably been a long day from Steady Mill. I'm not even sure if I can make that in a day. I do. I am quite a proficient runner. So I tend to like marathon it from town to town. Nice. As typical with dwarves, I'm distrustful and afraid of mounts. So instead of riding horse, I'll just jog for days on end. <laughs> yeah. But I, even at movement speed eight, I don't think I can make it from Steady Mill to Sandsgate in a day. It'd be a so long day. I, you could do it. Yeah. So I'll yeah. So it's getting towards evening time probably. Yeah. Sun is setting. I'll, find a local watering hole and buy some food. I don't typically carry rations and I certainly don't cook for myself. That's, that's peasants work. Right. Um, what sort of establishment are you looking for? Just any uh, old watering hole or something that caters more to your desires? Uh, I'm not particularly picky. I don't usually get along with people and I'm not necessarily looking to start trouble at this point. Okay. So, come across a place or, called the red barn. Quiet. The Red Barn. The Red Barn that looks... Sounds like a dive bar. Yeah. Uh, it's got a red uh, red wood in front. And kind of peering in through the door, you see that it's dimly lit. The crowd there is kind of on the quiet side. They're all eating and drinking. But, you know, the, the few groups that are there together can kind of chat. With, in, they chat in low tones, and you seem okay. like you wouldn't be bothered here. All right. I'll strut on in, get myself a meal. Mm -hmm. All right, you walk in. Bartender yeah. comes up to you. You know, you, you order your food. He brings you your drinks and your food eventually, and you pay four silver for it. Including uh, an in-room for the night? Or is it yes, an Yes, including a uh, room for the night. Okay. Uh, my character sheet. How do you do reaction adjust? Do you, or do you roll for those things ever? Or you just take I, I do. Uh, I take your five charisma to account most of the time. If there's a situation yeah. that may require it, I will do reaction just. But I rarely use it. Okay. So I have eleven attract hotness or whatever. So I'm oh, you rolled eleven. I'm reasonable looking, but as soon as I open my mouth, people are just like, "This guy is an asshole." He has no people skills whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll see what comes my way. Yeah. I'll eat my dinner, refresh myself from the day's journey, and. Okay. Uh, you munch your food, you do your thing, um, and eventually you actually. Uh, nothing happens that evening. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly normal evening, and you go to bed. All right. 
Um, at this point, I should ask, what are your character's ambitions? What, do you, what are you searching the world for? Do you have your own plot points that you want to do, or are you... Um, not that I've really fleshed out into detail. Uh, I mean, motivated by power and all that good evil stuff. So, in search of powerful magic and... Okay. Yeah, want to make the world kneel? Sort of got like that, I don't know, right. little man complex or bullied by my own people, so... Yeah, Napoleon sort of complex. Have to get my, yeah. Okay. Get my revenge, put the world in its place. All right. Uh, the next morning, you go downstairs for breakfast, and you see a man uh, dressed in... He's a fairly tall person, tall for a human even. He's like 6'1". He's mm -hmm. got a, a long black robe on, and you can see, as he's talking with the innkeep, red cuffs, so some sort of red shirt on. His hood is up, so you mm -hmm. can't see anything about him. He may not actually be human, but, but judging by the height... And the way that he's moving his hands about, you're guessing probably a human. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be in some sort of heated discussion with the innkeeper. I will approach so that I can hear. All right. You walk up. Uh, just 10 seconds or so to try and get an impression of what they're talking about. The innkeeper seems to be uh, turning down some sort of job that they, he had agreed to do beforehand and the guy is kind of upset with him uh they're trying to they're talking in fairly hushed tones but you know occasionally things will get out of hand you know occasionally someone will say what the fuck man or yell up they'll yell at each other uh but most of the time they're trying to keep it down so it's not working too well mm -hmm. um you get the impression that the innkeeper had agreed to go somewhere uh but now he finds the idea too dangerous so he's backing out all right, well, I'll, so after, at that point, I guess I'll plop myself down. Is this going on over the bar? Yeah. I'll plop my sound, b boldly plop myself down on the bar next to the man mm -hmm. and lean in and say, what seems to be going on here? Looks you, none of your business, dwarf. The innkeeper says this or the... The other man says other this. Man. Yeah. Do I get a look at his face as he turns to me? Yes, he is human. Uh, curly brown hair kind of drapes to his forehead. He's got a vicious scar going down the left cheek, um, down to the lip of the corner of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And give me a perception check. Perception is 10. So quite average. Yeah, no, 12. All right, that's all you see about him. Okay. <clears throat> I, I look at the innkeeper to get what his impression is. Like, does he look like he's afraid of this guy? Like he's he, welcoming my interruption, or like he's get out of he here. uses this as an opportunity to walk over and be like, "Hey, what can I what can I get you for breakfast, sir?" And the guy he's arguing with just glares at you when he does this. Okay, um, I put in an order with the uh, barkeep. I basically, I say whatever's grilling. Mm -hmm. I, with my seven grub skull or whatever it is, I don't really have a taste for the finer things in life. Food okay. is sustenance. All right. Um, is this guy still staring at me? Oh, I mean, I guess I've plopped myself down right next to him. Yeah, uh, the innkeeper walks off and he looks at you and says, You look like a tough motherfucker. How do you want to make some money? So what is this job that the innkeepers turning down there's a, a temple being constructed over pretty far to the east or to the west it's dangerous to get there but temple under construction and you need an escort i need a partner temple to what uh does he have a holy symbol visible he does not he shrugs, I don't know. Does it matter? <clears throat> he looks down at your holy symbol and goes, Oh. I see. Does he appear to be nicely dressed? You said he had like cuffs, like a red shirt. No, he is just wearing a red shirt. Um, he no. is decently dressed, not too nicely. Uh, you notice his pants are kind of tattered. And his shirt is a little bit nicer. No weapon. Better. 
uh, his cloak is blocking no. any sight of any weapons that he may have. You have no further information about this temple? He takes a closer look at you. He takes a moment to look you over and says, Nerul. That's that's a neutral god. Nerul and Reluna. The, they're gods of love and passion. I sort of make a, make a bit of a frown. Does it pay? It pays whatever we can find. You don't look like you'd mind getting your hands dirty. Nope. My coin purse is a little light. Well, fat ass over there doesn't want to come anymore. He thinks that it's too dangerous. <clears throat> is it out in the desert? Yeah. The way there is going to be tricky, but the rule in Laruna, I mean, come on. They're not going to have any soldiers. They're not going to have any guards. They're fucking hippies. Oh, wait. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood. I thought... So you're hitting this temple? Yeah, we're oh. going to go loot it. Oh, why didn't you say so? And I give him a pat on the shoulder. That's what I'm talking about. Good. Um, I pick up my breakfast, like mm -hmm. go and pay for it and walk out. Like, is it... Is it already out, or is it coming? Or it's no? coming. Like, how do you... You can't get your food to go. So, like, as soon as it shows up, I'm just gonna... You just, like, leave with the plate? <laughs> no, I'll just shove it in a bag or something. I don't know. We'll see. Tell, we'll tell you, me what... There's no such thing as to go food. <laughs> there is if you put it in your, in your pouch. All right, so what's... It's um... like chicken. Okay. Like, you're just gonna put your chicken in a leather pouch? And just... <laughs> Absolutely. It's chicken and baked it's beans. The chicken grease smell that, that makes my five charisma... All right, so you put your chicken and your baked beans in a leather bag, <laughs> <laughs> and it's... Oh, no, hold on. Okay, does this guy see... I guess if he's not in a hurry, I'll, I'll shovel down my, my breakfast and go. All right, you shovel down your breakfast and... Cost? Uh, one silver. All right. Okay. Does this guy order anything, or is he just... No, he doesn't order anything. I... So what's your name, bud? The name's Patty. Patty? Yeah. I'm Balrog. Balrog, nice to meet you. And he starts leading you towards the north exit of Sandsgate. Uh, oh, okay, this is after breakfast. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as you walk, he says, So, tell me about yourself, Balrog. Where are you from? <clears throat> A rock. Somewhere in the south, like most dwarves. <laughs> yeah, I crawled out of under a rock, too. It was a while he, ago, though. Does he have a backpack of any kind? He does. He has a fairly large backpack with okay. him. I actually probably... I don't have a backpack. I have a water skin, but no food. Yeah. No bag. No bag, okay. Holy water and unholy water are just um, mini wine, mini water skins. Okay. So not glass vials to throw. They're just in wine skins for splashing. Okay. Uh, he kind of looks you over and says, so I take it you know how to use that mall. It's not just for show, right? <laughs> I smile and don't speak a reply. Big, Good. Big, because big. the way there can be treacherous. These sands are nasty. Real nasty. I'm wearing a suit of chainmail, by the way. Right. Uh, that would be I over your clothes, then? Uh, it's under my cloak. Right. But over your shirt. Uh, it's basically instead of clothes. I mean, there's like a layer of cloth underneath it to keep mm -hmm. like hair from getting caught in it and from rubbing weird on the skin. Right. But, I mean, it's, yeah. It's basically my daily outfit. I'll take it off at night, but pretty much wear it all day. Okay. If you want to discuss penalties for doing it long term, we can get into that. Uh, with your con, you're not going to. Really I do. I have an endurance penalties. proficiency, so if there are any penalties, I mean, in no. If you have 19 con and an endurance proficiency, you can wear your armor to bed and be fine in the morning. <laughs> I do. I take it off every night for the most okay. part. But 
Yeah, no, fucking 19 con and endurance. You can. We'll, we'll let a lot of things slide that would normally be problematic. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so so leave the north gate? Yeah, he leads you through the north gate and immediately. And he said Patty, right? Patty. <laughs> Uh, and you guys immediately head east off of the, I'm sorry, west off of the road. In the sand? In, in the sand. Okay. I jog to keep up with him. Although I actually can't keep up with him. I, I jog. I mean, he slows his pace down to walk with you, you know. I, I, I what do you mean? Unless he actively, I, I jog at movement speed eight. It's, yeah. Yeah, you jog at movement speed eight. He's a little bit okay. encumbered by all of his weights. He moves at nine. He takes his you know, slows his pace a little bit to walk at eight with you. Okay. So. Yeah. I am encumbered. That's why I'm at eight. So I'm encumbered to movements before. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I, so I do have a chain mail proficiency, so I, it has half weight, but I'm mm -hmm. still at 45 pounds. Okay. Which is, and I'm not particularly strong. Okay. So double four is eight. Right, right, right. <clears throat> okay, so you guys are walking through the sands for a while. And Patty's, you know, talking to you about previous jobs he's done. You know, you guys are, he asks you about previous work that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I reveal that I am an armorsmith. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you're walking, he says, so, those tattoos... He's, uh, the only one that's visible is probably just the top of the rune on my neck. Yeah, he, he still uses plural. Yeah. Those tattoos and those uh, earrings, or whatever you call them. What's up with you? You look like a religious man of a different sort. <clears throat> I, I nod. Uh, yes... Yes, I respect the gods' powers and what they can do for me. And tell me, what can they do for you? <clears throat> uh, we'll see if we get into a bind, won't we? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, just my luck. Anyway, this temple, it should be in the, the corner of the mountains, just where they start to curve. I hear that these Luna and the rule people are just head over heels with each other, so to speak. And <laughs> Anyway, there should be plenty of things to find and gather, if you catch my drift. We, we should come out wealthy men. Um, Sounds good and good to bashed a few of these lovey hippie heads in while we're at it. Uh, as you walk, you notice he eventually uh, lets his cloak fall to his side enough that you can see he's got a long sword with him. Mm -hmm. And he's got a couple of daggers around his waist too. So he seems to be fairly well armed. You mm -hmm. guys stop for food and drinks, uh, food and water occasionally. Mm -hmm. He brings some out. The You're surprised at how cool the desert is. You really expected it would be blistering heat that would be you know unbearable to walk in. Mm -hmm. But it's surprisingly not. Um, it's, it's warm. It's, what time of year is it? It is... Where's my D12? Um, May. Okay, so it's, it's getting on just towards summer. Yeah. It's, okay. But it's still surprisingly cool around here. Why they call it the cooling sands? Possibly why or they call water. it the cooling sands. Under surface? Yeah. Um, so you guys walk, and the rest of the day goes very uneventfully. You, you chat mm -hmm. for a little bit. You stop at an oasis uh, on your way. Yeah. Uh, and is that one on the map, or is it? No, it's not marked on the map. Okay. Um, and you, it's it's a smaller one. There's a couple of trees around, and you see uh, six people with eight horses there too. And you guys make camp on the opposite side of the oasis for them for the evening. Okay. Do we give them? We don't. At least he, Patty doesn't seem to have any interest in approaching them. Patty doesn't try to approach them at all. Okay. Do you? I'll, no. Follow this lead. Um. Was the water? I'll go check the water. Is it fresh and? It is fresh. Cool? Yeah, there is grass surrounding the oasis. There's a couple of trees hanging about. Okay. Not palm trees though, but you know other trees. Okay. Dates. I will refill my water skin. Carries okay. about a half gallon. Okay. 
Um, and I will check, I will eat my fill of dates or whatever I can scrounge up. Let me know if I find any critters that look like I can whack them all. I don't carry rations, so I'm hungry. Unless Patty shared food, which I doubt he did. No, he brought food for the two of you. Okay. He seemed to be ready to go with this mm-hmm. innkeeper guy, and then the innkeeper bailed last minute, so... Yeah. Um, you guys split food for a little bit and chat. Is there anything specific you'd like to speak to him about? No, and I'm yeah, not much of a conversationalist. So, it, it was, yeah, unless Patty is a good talker, it's probably an awkward conversation. Okay. Um, All right, you guys have awkward conversation um, and go to sleep. <laughs> You wake up the next morning, the horsemen are gone already, or maybe they left in the night or something, but you certainly weren't wakened by them. Mm-hmm. And uh, you take off. Yeah. You're walking for about three hours before you come across um, this massive scorpion. It's probably like four feet long, and it has a big old stinger that comes up like three and a half feet off the ground, and you see <clears> behind <throat> him is a second one. I, so my, my maul is on a, like a sling Mm -hmm. on my back. So I start to uh, get it ready in case I'll need it. Uh, are the, have the scorpions noticed us? Are they just like, uh, they seem to be fighting each other currently. Um, they're pinching at each other and their stingers are going around and stinging and missing and missing. And, uh, and Patty looks at them because you guys are like, had walked up like a sand dune. And mm-hmm. at the top of the sand dune, you're looking down at this thing. Mm-hmm. And they're fighting down there. And, and Patty gets a smile on his face and pulls a, a, a date out of his pocket and hurls it down at one of the scorpions. I pull my hammer off my back, grinning mm-hmm. merrily. Um, the two scorpions fight. Mm-hmm. They both seem to be slightly incompetent. Mm-hmm. Um, until one of them finally gets a, a stinging blow straight on uh, in the the back, the lower back of one of the other the other scorpion, mm-hmm. and the other scorpion twitches for a moment, and their claws are still entangled, and then the the one that was stung starts to move a little bit more sluggishly, and the battle continues, and the sluggishness slows, and he just stops moving, mm-hmm. uh, and the first one goes over and like snips off the other guy's tail, mm-hmm. um, and at this point. Patty turns to look at you, big grin on his face, pulls out his long sword and gives like a uh, a yelling charge as he roars down the hill. I'll charge after him. Um, I would charge before him, but or in front of him, but I'm not fast enough. Okay. Give me uh, an initiative roll. Rd Rd ten plus. Mall is speed. Five for me. I have two up in fighting. Ouch. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. The oh I didn't do needs to roll for Patty. Patty gets there first, uh, takes the sword, swings at the scorpion, and completely misses. Like he was aiming for the tail and the tail like pulls back at one moment. Patty runs by the scorpion who Turns to face him and snaps at him with some pincers. Uh oh. Uh oh. Patty gets hit by one pincher, criticaled by the other pincher. Uh oh. Um, Patty takes four, five, six, uh, nine damage. You don't need to tell me that. I guess I didn't need to tell you that. But I wanted to. Is he still standing? He's still standing. And uh, and the stinger comes down to try and grab him as well. But it lands in the dirt beside him. Sting me! Sting me! (laughs) Uh, It is your turn after all. Alright. R-D-20. No bonuses. Ugh. And a miss. Okay. You miss. Initiative. There we go. Six. You are first. 
I have two mall th expertise, so I get two attacks this round. One now, one at the end of combat. Yeah. Or end of round. Yes. Yeah. Eleven. Uh, you actually get a flanking attack on the scorpion, but you, uh, so your hammer swings into the side of it and, like, clatters off uh, his exoskeleton, causing no harm. Glancing blow, as they call it. Is flank plus one or plus two? Flank is plus one, back attack is plus two. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I taunt the scorpion as best I can taunt an unintelligent animal. Okay. And the, Come the, get me, you ugly motherfucker. Scorpion pays you no heed and takes his pincer attacks at Patty. Wow. Uh, the first pincer attack just kind of the, both the pincer attacks are easily dodged. Patty kind of picks his feet up, does one of those like high knee things to step out of the way while the stinger comes down during his high knees and grabs him right in the thigh. Ooh, Patty. He. Um, Patty goes down on one knee, makes himself a saving throw. Um, Patty. Uh, and lashes back out with his sword, which is a complete miss. It is your turn. Uh, uh, your second attack, I mean. I should get. Orison is nice to have. 17. Ooh, 17 is a hit. Is this thing size large? Or size okay. medium. Nice. Five damage. Chia. Okay. You whap the scorpion for five damage, and that is the end of that combat round. Roll for initiative. Seven. You go first. Thirteen. Thirteen. If it's, is it still a flank, or has it turned? Uh, I mean, you could have shifted to its back if you had wanted to. I will absolutely do that. Yeah, I mean, because it's it's not that big. You can easily like take a couple steps to your left or right. So back attack makes it a fifteen, and, and you I hit. Not afraid of that stinger. Six damage. Six damage. You are not afraid of the stinger. No. Nope. What's your poison save? Four. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. Um, Ten because I'm a priest, plus five because I'm a dwarf with high con, and an additional plus one because of my con. Yeah. In general. So. Wow. I will have max poison slave in another couple of levels. Wow. Um, the Patty goes next. He takes himself a swing, critically misses. Does he look to be slowing down? No, he does not seem to be slowing down or anything. Uh, and the scorpion turns his back to Patty, makes mm -hmm. an attack at you, which gives Patty an attack of opportunity. Ah! Which he wow, incompetently oops. misses as well. Um, you're starting to have real doubts about his capabilities as a fighter. <laughs> um, the scorpion turns to you. You have AC 15, right? Yeah, I have chain mail, yeah. Right. No dicks, I think. Yeah, it's 15. Okay. Uh, you get grabbed once by a pincer for two damage, and you get stung. Shit. <laughs> I am going to need that poison save. For one damage. Uh, give me a save versus poison. Four or higher. Oh, God. This... Okay, pass. Seven, all right. <laughs> uh, you feel the poison course through you, and you just kind of... <clears throat> you give it a grunt, and it doesn't even matter. I flex to let it course through my veins. Uh, the scorpion shows no fear. It makes me stronger. And I believe you turn. You got last for initiative? Uh, no, I went first this round. I okay, you went first. Then everyone has gone. Um, and it's initiative this round. Or for next round. Eight. Eight. You, get, you had one attack last round, so you get two attacks this round, right? Yep, yep. All right, Scorpion tries to grab at you again. Uh, Fifteen armor class. Mm-hmm. Can't double crit. I don't think. Does it have plus five to hit? It does. Motherfucker. That is a double crit. <sighs> it 
can't end this fast. <laughs> it's not supposed to end this fast. I think it just ended this fast. You're an asshole. <laughs> I don't mean for... Can you give yourself a plus one to AC somehow? Or a penalty of one for it to hit somehow? Not that I can think of. Unless it's a Ogre Troll, Ogre Magi, or Giant. That's not... Give it... Come on, give me an excuse to give you a plus one to AC. Uh... I got twinkle toes. <laughs> um, um, I can't think of any terrain benefits. Unless I'm on a hill, high ground. But... Uh, did you get a plus one to hit a high ground? But it doesn't get a plus one to. It doesn't get a penalty of one to hit. Mm -hmm. Come on, there's got to be some some rule somewhere that we're not exploiting. <laughs> I'm on your side here, man. No? Mm -hmm. I don't see anything in chat. That's, I, don't I, mean, see anything I can't either. think of any. All right, well, you take 14, then. Damn. Um... <sighs> I take it okay. you are... are I'm you... unconscious. I'm at negative five. Oh, okay. You're not fully dead yet. No. Okay. Well, maybe... maybe assuming the... assuming what's-his-balls can finish it off and stop my bleeding. I'm All actually right. not bleeding. It's just... Is it minus... I get save versus death every round to get plus or minus? Uh, no, no. That's... If thinking fourth edition. You get... No, no, no. Um, you get save versus death. Uh, wait, if you are healed, like if you're not bleeding to death every day, you get save versus death to get plus okay. one. Okay. Um, in this case, um, the fight continues. Balls misses. Balls, balls, balls. Balls. <clears throat> Less balls. Um, hit. Damage. Hit. Uh, no. Hit. Damage. One. Carbon. Miss. Miss. Um. Okay. Hmm. All right. So you you do get your wounds bound after four rounds of combat. Um. Did I um? I should roll sabers of death, huh? For oh, for the critical effect. Absolutely. Okay, yes, we're fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep, Neil is playing with himself. Yeah, yeah, playing with myself. Um, so your wounds get bound. All right, you wake up an untold amount of time later in Sands Gate. You have no money on you whatsoever. Do I have my equipment or no? Uh, you have your maul. What other things did you have on you? Mostly just weapons. I'll read what I had. Maul, chain mail, clothes, holy symbol, holy water, unholy water, club, water skin. And then... uh, your club and your water, all your water is gone. You mm -hmm. have your holy symbol around your neck, you have your chain mail still on, and you have a maul by your side. You are on a cot in a darkened room next mm -hmm. to uh, a darkened room with four other cots in the room. Two of them have people on them, the third one, or the, one of them is empty, and the other has someone who is clearly dead on it. Well, motherfucker. All right, I grumble. Am I at one HP? You are at one HP. Can I get a spell or no? Um, yes, I will let you memorize spells. Okay, I'm just going to get a Cure Light Wounds. Okay. Cure Light Wounds myself. Okay. Well, 
Your double crit roll is stupid. <laughs> Six HP. Okay. Seven. Well, in theory, a single crit could have done 16 to you, so... Wow. All right. Grumbling at the shortness of that adventure, I stumble to my feet and pull on my armor, grab my maul, and poke my head outside of this room. Okay. There is a single exit out. Mm -hmm. uh, you peek into a room that where there is a man being... Uh, what's it? Fallaciated by a girl in a bed. There's a door on the opposite side, and there's a small desk nearby. But this seems to be like a a room that adjoins two to other rooms. I walk through this room to the room. Okay. The as side. as you step in, mm -hmm. the the guy goes whoa 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 whoa, and like you know, starts pulling up his pants and says, uh, "Hey, you're awake." <laughs> How did I get here? Some guy came by, said that there was a wounded person out by the oasis. We went out and found you. Who are you? I'm a healer. Uh, my, my name is Richard. Sorry, but I didn't think no one was supposed to be waking. Sorry, Carrie, can you, can you go for now? And she kind of gets up, gives him a look, puts out a hand. He drops a couple of coins in her hand, and she walks out the door. Have you been paid? I see that my money is gone. Yeah, we've been paid. Your money was gone when we found you, though. Fair enough. I was found at the Oasis. Alone. Yeah. What? Alone? Yeah, alone. Hmm. Rubbing my face, I walk out of the room, I guess. He... Kind of just watches you. Seems a little bit awestruck and a little confused. Um, uh, but he doesn't stop you. Okay. I walk back into the desert. All right. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you walk back into the desert. You have no food or water, though. I don't have any money to buy another water skin. I have my holy water still, right? Uh, no, no water. No holy water, even. How would they know the difference? I guess so. I'm going to drink that unholy water and get sick. The whole unholy water is probably pretty obviously tainted. Yeah. Well, once they open it. At least they left my, my mall. All right. I run into the desert and try and find that same oasis that I found the first day. Okay. Uh, you get there well after dark. Okay. Because you drink woke up, up part I'm probably through. absolutely famished and dehydrated. Yeah. Well, you you drink up. You there are Sorry. there are other people here. There seems to be two different groups of people here. Um, one is a man with three horses. The other is a small caravan, a uh, camel caravan. It's got mm -hmm. four camels and two people. The camels are heavily burdened. Well, right now they're not burdened, but it looks like in the morning they would be heavily burdened with equipment. The uh, man doesn't look like the guy I was with, does he? No, 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 no. Okay. So I, I find a spot by myself. Okay. Uh, the other two groups have fires that look like they're burning uh, horse or camel poo to keep warm. Disgusting. Yeah. All right. I find a spot myself and try and get some sleep okay no one bothers you and uh you wake up the next morning the mm -hmm. camels are the camel drivers are uh waking up too and oh shit i need to roll i might i'm actually haven't I, my healings but oh wait oh. did you roll a 100 on a d100 i didn't actually roll a d100 okay 50 so i'm fine i need to roll spell failure every time i cast a spell Oh. So if I roll between a 90 and a 100, the gods yeah. do not answer my prayer. They look down with scorn upon my lack of commitment to any one god. Okay. So, all right. Sorry, what were you describing? I, I was saying the Dumb. camel drivers are starting to pack their camels. The guy with the horses is still asleep. The next morning or the... Yeah, the next morning. 
right, I will memorize a Cure Light Wounds and cast it again. Give me a spell fail, okay. Passes. And HP gain. Five, I am a full. Okay. Okay. I um, drink as much water as I possibly can. Okay. And grumbling as I jog off into the desert again. The direction I thought, I think we were heading. Okay, you jog off into the desert. Um, you come over a hill and you see the desiccated corpses of two scorpions at some mm -hmm. point. Um, looks like one of them has been hacked to uh, pretty badly to death with a sword. Its tail I, is. I survey the scene. Does it look like? Uh, it looks like there. exactly where you fought before, and it looks like one of the scorpions has been uh, slashed to pieces with a sword, and then. Possibly after postmortem, maybe in the battle, the tail has been hacked into four bits mm -hmm. and stuck into the the skull. Mm -hmm. I give it a kick. Unless there's any of my stuff or anything around, I keep moving. Okay, you keep moving. Um, it's it's probably been weak. I, I guess the footprints are probably no longer there. No, but. definitely not there. Okay. Okay. Oh, give wow. Okay. Um. You keep going and get to the next oasis um, halfway through the day. There seems to be quite a few oases around here. Okay. Um, there is no one at this place at all. Okay. It's halfway through the day. Do you stay for the rest of the day? Do you move on? Uh, I drink as much water as I can and move on. Okay. You move on. Um, you keep traveling. Still kind of headed, you can see the mountains off in the distance and you kind of know that you're you're headed towards that little crux where the mountains join. Okay. So you, you can keep a fairly <laughs> accurate heading. Um, mm -hmm. And the day ends. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Let me. Oh. I want to do some, I may actually not be encumbered anymore. I am, I am no longer encumbered. So I'm moving at movement rate 12, by the way. Oh, you're moving at 12. Yeah. Okay, well then you got to the next oasis only a few hours later. Mm -hmm. uh, and moving at 12, where is my map? Okay. So you actually would have gotten to that first oasis way earlier than you did. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess you could have just rested there longer. Sure. Get to the next one, and then you keep going until you come across a pavilion. It's a very large tent. It has a couple of trees surrounding it and some grass uh, beneath it, but you don't see... I mean, maybe it's literally on top of a watering hole, maybe not. Okay. And there are three armed guards surrounding it and two horses. I approach the guards. Okay. I... What is this place? This is our watering hole. If you would like some water... You must pay the fee. How many guards? Three. Uh, you're only there's. They're kind of center. Not there's two on one side, one on the other side. You're approaching the side with two. So there's three guards. This is the end of the. Wait, this is the evening, right? No. Uh, yes. This is towards. It's not quite evening. Okay. Hmm. Okay. If you'd like I, some water, you have to pay the fee. One gold, as much as you want. I had some water midday. I'm probably thirsty, but not that thirsty. It's not Ice. too hot here, but it is very dry. Yeah. So you sweat a lot, especially all day long. In chain mail and a black In, cape. Yes. Do, can I see inside the pavilion? No. I spit at the guard's feet and turn to walk away. Have fun out there. You're gonna die. Alright. Um, I go past the pavilion a ways, climb a hill, and try and get a view, but I'm basically gonna stay right next to the pavilion. Okay. You get a view. You can see just kind of more sand dunes rolling and uh, rolling mm -hmm. and rolling. Um, give me a perception check. Twenty-four. 
Okay. You see off in the distance there is a man with a couple of horses or maybe camels mm -hmm. uh, headed your way. It's pretty far off in the distance. Probably five miles. Mm, I'm going to wait until dark. Up okay. on this hill and see if the guy approaches. Okay. Um, you watch him throughout the day. He kind of often dips yeah, below it's you. Like evening. Wait, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's towards evening. It's not quite evening. Okay. It's only five miles. So, I mean, he, he d often dips down from view, like yeah. when he goes down a hill and then he'll pop back up. Uh, mm -hmm. And you see him uh, approaching uh, as dusk falls. It looks okay. like Patty, and he's got three horses. He approaches you and says, Oh, you're alive. <clears throat> I'm harder to kill than that. Looks like you had some success. Yeah. Did you find the the temple? Well, I came across uh, somebody else on the way. They had some other stuff with them. Decided that bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I'm, ha I'm going back to sell off some of these horses and resupply before I head back out there. Does he have any of my stuff, obviously, hanging on him? Yeah. You recognize your holy and unholy water skins uh, dangling off one of the horses. I know. I say, you can keep the gold, but that stuff's mine. <laughs> what stuff? You don't even know what that is. And I point to one of the, one of the flasks. It's water. I didn't drink it. <laughs> and I chuckle. What is it? He frowns. Unholy water. You'd probably notice as soon as you drank it. And I reach out to grab that off of him. He does not stop you. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, we've been going for an hour. So let's give it a rest. Um, we'll be back in three to five minutes, guys. See you soon.